What's up YouTube? Uh, another video for you today and it's kind of an update on what I've been doing as far as Kydex sheaths and whatnot. Uh, if you guys remember the original press I did it was a larger press and it's working out pretty good for my larger project. A, uh, a lot of the knives I had to make sheaths for were on the larger size uh, side. I'm talking um, 12 inches plus in length. Uh, but it, it's kind of bulky to go ahead and uh, to do your smaller sheets with so I went ahead and I wanted to refine my original idea and uh, make it smaller and then just just fine-tune it tweak it a little bit and I'm going to show you what I uh, what I came up with okay basically we have ourselves a the smaller press I made this guy is I remember I forget the me uh, measurements here okay it's about eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter by twelve the actual pressing is going to be eight and a quarter by by ten and a quarter so you got a substantial amount of size there now what I went ahead and did and I went with the hinge system uh, but the problem with the hinge system is that you're locked in in the back and it was always an issue as far as you having uh, let's say things that are uneven or whatnot uh, just if you wanted to get an even press if it's locked down in the back you're gonna have more pressure towards the back and this is going to angle upwards like that if it's in there so what I went ahead and did is on this model I changed up quite a bit uh, I went ahead you see the thumbs uh, the quarter 20 screws there they're still the four inch screws I used before and basically what I did is now you can loosen these guys and adjust it now the thing is if you loosen and adjust it you're still gonna have some play um, and toggle in there so I was thinking what could I do to resolve that. I'm going to show you this real quick. Pretty interesting how I came up with this. And it's worked pretty well so far. Um, excuse me, give me a second. So I'm loosening up these wing nuts here. Just to show you something that's pretty cool. Okay. I don't know if you can notice, but you see in there, there's a spring. So now, basically... This always, as you loosen the thumb, you can evenly distribute it. If you have a piece that's in there and it's clamped down tight here, you can look on the side and tighten this, and this will add even pressure all the way through. So that's one of the biggest upgrades I did to that. Now, as far as how I did it, it's the same uh, method as before. You get your four. You cut. Basically, what I did is I cut my two. Uh, this is MDF, like I stated before, 12 by 8, and I cut two identical pieces. I went ahead and took about. This distance here is about an inch and a half. I made a mark straight across. Now what I did to help me out is I went ahead and pre... I already mounted the hinges to it before it was cut. So basically I have my holes in place. Once I mount it, uh, basically you draw your line. You line up your hinges right even with the lines. Drill your... Uh, put your screws in and everything and mount it like you would. Take the screws off, then go ahead and cut it. That way it's, it's nice and even. It'll help you out later in the long run, trust me. Um, and then basically, as far as the screws go and mounting those, over here, you drill your hole, uh, your quarter inch hole, through this guy and through here. And then what you're going to do is not only do you have to countersink this part to accommodate the quarter 20 screw, I added the quarter 20 screw and I also added a off centered like lock washer in there. So I got the screw lock washer quarter 20 nut and then I made sure I countersunk it so it would accommodate the spring that way the spring has a pocket to sit in and it's not dancing all over the place same thing on the other side now on the top on the underside here I countersunk that also and when I'm countersinking I'm talking about this right here is uh, I think it's half inch MDF if I remember correctly I don't know where my little ruler went here um, the MDF is actually three quarters of an inch so if you countersink this a quarter of an inch it should be a good enough pocket for that spring to stay put in there and basically that'll keep the spring from going back and forth and then the quarter 20 screw uh, rides in that spring now as far as where did I get the hardware on this well um, if, I don't know if you guys have an ace hardware by your house but my ace hardware has a lot of little uh, specific screws for all kinds of little projects so when I was in there, I got my four-inch screws, and they have a, a drawer with a bunch of different springs on there. 
Uh, the spring I actually got for it was a uh, it was a three inch spring. So the four inch screw. And then I made sure that the tension on it, like I squished it down to about an inch and a half or so. And if I could do that with my finger, then you're good. You don't want to get too stiff of a spring because you'll never be able to collapse this properly in order to, to get it to work or to function. But like I said, this is a smaller solution uh, for my presses. I get it in here, hinged up, bang. So you can see right then and there, this goes down. You're ready to go, you clamp it, and you're done. And once you clamp it, uh, look at the sides if you need to raise it up. If you're doing smaller pieces, as you can see here, if I'm doing something uh, like a little neck knife that's right to here, you're not really going to have to clamp this all the way down, just about to there. Or, But the more the, the more that it, this is dug down here, the more definition you'll get to the tip. Now, another thing, too, is I, remember, you guys, I told you that this foam that I got was a, it's kind of an anti-fatigue mat that, that I got uh, in an office building I was working at. And it works fine, but to tell you the truth, uh, this foam is really stiff. So what happens is I do get some good definition on the top side, but it's not squishy enough to actually go around the piece or go around the work to really do it. So I've had to kind of press it twice. And some of the um, larger fixed blades that I've had um, with the uh, thicker handles, I had to actually hand mold it uh, so I can get the retention just right. Now, I did press it and it turned out fine, but for I'm kind of particular and I kind of went back and hand molded it so I got good retention. So... That's the press I got there. I use this one a lot on the smaller stuff. Some of the larger stuff too. I mean, this is 8 inches here. Uh, so you'll be able to press quite a bit of stuff there. So it works out pretty well. And um, the, the materials, the hinges were like 4 bucks. The springs were like $1.50 each. So you're looking at about, uh, about $10 in hardware. Uh, the MDF, like I said, I bought that whole sheet for like, you know, like, uh, I think it was 6 bucks or something. I can't remember what. But it was a huge sheet and I've been able to make both these presses and uh, I still have a lot left over so it's re relatively in inexpensive and it's a lot cheaper than actually buying a press so anyway that's that uh, press is working good I put remember I put little I put little blocks here they're uh, one by one or I think one and a half by one and a half square uh, blocks that I drilled in from the uh, from the top side of this just make sure if you're gonna do that you countersink your uh, your screws in here so the head doesn't protrude up to the foam not really a big deal uh, because your foam will, uh, you know, it's not really, it's not going to show in any impressions you make too much. But I just do it just in case. Uh, it's, a, it's a cleaner look and, and, you know, what to take to countersink it just for, you know, a second. So, there you go. That's that. I got a couple other things I wanted to show you guys to kind of help you out. As I'm going through my little Kydex kick here and getting to learn some stuff, I'm picking up some other, uh, some other stuff. Now, on... Let me see here. Oh, this is uh, what I pressed out of that smaller press so far. As you can see, um, this I didn't hand mold or anything. This is exactly how it came out to press. Uh, I may have pressed it once really good, reheated it, and pressed it again. And basically, it's just a little Spyderco neck knife that I added a handle to. These usually come skeletonized. And uh, pretty good retention. Okay, now as far as the hardware, the eyelets I... Uh, I've been getting from, um, or I did get my first hundred eyelets from USA Knife Maker. Uh, they are these guys for 060 Kydex. The S61s are pretty good. Now you're going to have a little bit of excess coming out the back, but it'll press just fine. Um, you could actually do three sheets of 060, and this will still hold it and retain it. And I like these a lot, but they have other rivets um, that I didn't see it in USA Knife Maker. Maybe they have it there and I just didn't look good enough. But they actually have a washer piece that goes and sits on top of here so that when you press it, it actually gives you a wider surface to retain the kydex on the back. And it's a neater look, in my opinion. And let me show you an example of that. Uh, basically, I don't know if you can see here, but you see that little washer deal right there? That's what I'm talking about. These are actually, these were bronze, and I acid washed them to kind of give them more of a weathered look because I didn't like the bronze. I wanted to darken it up a little bit for this for this sheath right here. Uh, this was make, made on my first sheath, or my first uh, Kite Express. So that's that, and I'll, uh, that leads me to my next deal. Uh, as far as heat gun, definitely need it. Uh, heat gun, Harbor Freight, this is what I've got. It was 12 bucks. They usually, they always have a coupon for $9.99, so if you type in Google Harbor Freight heat gun coupon, 
uh, you'll be able to find it that way or just sit tight and wait for one or just pay the extra three bucks and get yourself a heat gun. Uh, this has worked well for me. There's two settings. Uh, there's low heat, high heat. And it'll it'll help out a lot. Uh, forget that toaster oven stuff and all that other stuff, uh, because you know with this you heat the shiny side of the Kydex. You never overheat it where it's going to be shiny on the because the shiny side's the underside, and it'll uh, your work turns out cleaner that way. So like 12 bucks for this. Now, when you run around trying to find something to press your rivets, you can find little stuff like this. This is garbage. Uh, this will not press at all. It's not nearly strong enough to press and mold those uh, the eyelets and uh, I don't know what application this is for maybe snap buttons but this is not going to work for you uh, your hand press or your little uh, grommet press here's a kit right here and this this can also I found this at Ace Hardware I mean I bought I ordered this online because it was cheaper but Ace Hardware has these and uh, and you know, I think they're like 15 bucks, and it comes with the the base, the uh, the uh, grommet setter, little wood block, even the punch to punch the holes out, and it comes with rivets. Um, this right here is three eighths, and the O oh, the S61 rivets, like I just showed you a second ago, that I got from USA Knife Maker, or quarter will accommodate quarter inch uh, quarter inch Chicago screws, and this is a little bigger. Um, actually. It's just a hair bigger, yeah, but it's considerably bigger. I mean, these will work too, but this is the kit. You can get that, and you can get it to work. It's a little bit more of a pain in the ass, but I knew I was going to be doing a bunch of Kydex work um, now and in the future, so I was looking around, and thank God for eBay, because what I'm going to show you is probably one of the coolest things ever. Here you go, guys. It's not even going to fit in the screen, but this is what I use for pressing my kydex and this guy can be got uh, you can get this on ebay for about 60 bucks shipped to your house um, it comes with three attachments for your quarter inch eyelets for i believe whoops quarter inch eyelets three eighths eyelets or i think three eighths uh no quarter inch half inch and one inch eyelets it comes with three sets not only does it come with those sets that can be interchanged here it also comes with 500 of the eyelets of each in the nickel finish. Um, so it's a good deal. Um, if you look it up, if you write, um, uh, if you uh, Google or no, if you go to eBay and write grommet press, uh, you'll be able to find it. Excuse me. You, uh, you'll be able to find it under grommet press. Just look at this picture here. Um, the dealer, um, they have, they're like, 60 bucks and you can get them for 52 but they they come from overseas and you'll be waiting a long time it took the total of uh, i think five days for me to get this not even uh from a guy the dealer was located in miami and it came to me and i just went ahead and you know i just made sure i uh i oiled it up and made sure everything was oiled up i oiled up the uh uh the press itself right there because it's less likely to mar your eyelets when you go to stamp so this has been a lifesaver uh, it, it, your eyelets turn out perfect. Uh, let me show you an example real quick. So here you go to get a good look at it. This is what the press looks like. Sorry guys. There you go. It's got the marking there. I wonder if there's any other identifying markings. Oh, here you go. See how it says K-A-M on there with the little red swoosh. Now they come, they have a blue version of this and they come in different colors. Some are different. The base is different. Uh, just make sure it's got the quarter inch eyelet or if it comes with three of the dies in there, you know one of the three are going to work for you. And for 60 bucks, if you're going to be doing this on a regular basis, uh, if you're going to be doing gun, um, if you're going to be doing gun holsters or anything like that, even if you get into leather work, I mean, this is pretty universal. You can put all kinds of, uh, the, the button snaps or the metal snaps, um, dies and, um, uh, fit in this also. So if you do that, and I'll show you those in a second. So. Pretty much there you go, 60 bucks. Oh, and let me show you. These are all the eyelets that came with that kit. And uh, these are the backing pieces I was telling you about. So basically you have this guy. See if it'll focus. There you go. This guy goes through here your kydex it sits in a press this sits at the bottom of your press like this kydex pieces go on top and then that little washer deal goes on top of everything 
And when this top of the grommet rolls over, it holds onto this washer piece. And it, like I said, it's a cleaner look for sure. Just a real clean. And I've got, I've got a thousand of them here now, or not thousand, but I've got 500 plus 100 black ones. Um, eBay is a good source to get the eyelets. Uh, I think I could get, uh, I can get a hundred of them for eight dollars now, and they are the not the shiny black, but the dulled out black. They also come in bronze and all kinds of uh, bronze and silver, um, you know. And all these, the silver ones, you could always do an, uh, you know, acid wash, dip them in there for, I think, not even 10 to 15 seconds and turn right away and you'll get this kind of uh, bronzish aged, kind of a steampunkish t uh, tone or color to them. So that's that there. Uh, okay, next up. Now, one of the things I'm making my sheath, so I just didn't want to make a sheath and put a tech lock on it. Uh, the tech lock's kind of limited to... Uh, where you know basically your tech lock is going to have your a larger fixed blade right high on it high on the hip That way you have to pull it up really high to you know if you've got let's say if your if your fixed blade is a Let's say it's a 14 inch fixed blade So you have to lift that knife at least 10 inches or so Up out of the sheath before you can pull it out and basically 10 inches above your belt line where, where your kite your um, tech lock is going to be right there at the base of the the uh, the base of the sheath and you have to lift that knife 10 inches out and it's kind of awkward to do that you want it to ride a little lower you want the head of the the top of the knife handle to be even with your belt or maybe just a hair lower that way you can pull it out really easy I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about um, let me see here okay guys so here we go this is a sheath um, don't mind the the uh, paracord there. I just threw that on there uh, before I came out with the loop. But basically, if you have if you have a tech lock, it's going to sit right here, and this is your waistline, right? So you're going to have this sitting above your waistline, which means you have to pull when you draw it. By the time you draw it to the end of this knife, you're going to be way up. I mean, you're going to have the handle of the knife all the way up by your armpit before you get it out. So the tech lock. In some situations, if it's a smaller knife, eight inch total, no big deal. You can lift it out. But on a larger knife, it wasn't. It didn't seem like a practical way of getting it out. So what I went ahead and did is here's my sheath there. This is an Ontario SP something or another. I got the blade off eBay, and I, it, the handles were taken out. These had, uh, I think, a Crichton handle or whatever. And this is what I came up with here. So basically, I don't think I've ever shown you guys this. So we got ourselves. The Ontario spec, whatever. It's the uh, I think it's a it's a Raider Bowie, but it's the larger one. This knife total is 16 and three quarter inches. Like I'm saying, uh, this is a scale work I did on it, by the way. So basically, little staggered crown. I really like that. Thickened up the handle like so. Um, this is a little challenging to do the handle, but anyway, I wanted to make a sheath for it. Here it is. So basically, Kydex or the Tech Lock would sit here, it would ride high. So now. What I went ahead and did is I have a drop down loop there. As you can see here, I've got this nylon strapping that I also got at Ace. It's half inch and basically I have two pieces going left and right to the center and then another loop here. A very generous belt loop right there as you can see and basically we got snaps right here. Uh, I took this from an old donor sheath from a piece of crap knife I had and it's got the velcro to hold it in there. So from here, I attached Chicago screws, burned a hole through this uh, the nylon webbing, which is half inch, attached that, then burned a hole through these two pieces of nylon webbing, and uh, burned a hole center on this guy, attached these one, two, and three together, and then four right here. This is where those button snaps come into play. So here you go, half inch nylon, pop this open. And basically, I made this. So I got the little button snaps, and there you go. But what I'm saying now is, you see right here, this is my waistline. The handle comes way up to here. So now I don't have. I have. There's four and a half to five inches of knife that I have, don't have to pull up over my belt line because I've extended it. It drops down. Now eventually, I'll be adding slots to the bottom here to have a uh, drop-down leg uh, strap because I've got the strapping for it. I'm going to use paracord buckles to buckle that together. It's going to be all adjustable, but this is what it looks like together. Good retention. This comes up like so. 
Velcro and there we are. So there's a nice way, clean way of doing it. Uh, I like the, the tech lock system. It, it's really beefy and it looks really good. Uh, but as far as the functionality for a larger knife, it doesn't work. On a smaller knife, not a big issue. Uh, like, let's say, for something like this eight and a half inch bad blood, you can put a tech lock on here right on your hip. You have it on your hip. You can EDC it, no problem. Well, you don't have that much knife to pull out. You have to pull it out this far. Bang. This guy, you have to pull it out further. So, anyway, there you go. Sorry about the long video. I just wanted to go ahead and show you what I've come up with so far. And, um, actually, Ace Hardware does sell those button snaps. And, basically, I don't have the original packing for it. But they have this setter and then the base. This base. And basically it works in the same pr principle as eyelet set. And that way you can go ahead and complete a larger sheath uh, without having to go uh, with the tech lock. Now that half inch nylon webbing, I uh, was able to get three yards for about $2 shipped to the house off of eBay. Multiple colors, all your OD green, coyote brown, some of your funky colors, everything. Uh, but half inch, uh, I got it for like three bucks shipped to the house for three yards, nine feet or so. Um, and basically, you're going to want to get more than less because basically, uh, like on th that knife there, I want to do a strap system for it so I can um, so I can scout carry it too because you're not always going to want it on your hip. You're going to want to be able to throw it over your shoulder. And uh, so you can do that and do mounting for that and get that done. And these snaps along with paracord buckles, these guys right here are uh, so your adjustment straps for your leg straps or for your uh, your arm strap or whatever shoulder strap for your uh, scout carry you're gonna need those and uh, so but it's not something you can do all you know you, you know you do your sheaths um, and then eventually save up your money spend 10 bucks a week and you'll eventually by a month or so you'll have everything you'll need to start really getting tricked out with your with your sheaths there um, as far as kydex go I highly recommend you get the kydex through uh, Amazon I was able to get like like six sheets or eight sheets for like dirt cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, another example, this right here is my Gil Hibben, um, my Gil Hibben uh, 4 or 5. And uh, this is a large damn knife. Uh, we're looking at uh, the total on this guy is 20 inches long, weighs just under 2 pounds. This is huge. So this is a sheath I did for it there. I pressed it out. Another thing too is I only... You only need to uh, press and mold the top half on these. Basically, remember, guys, this is going to be sitting off your hip, uh, so you want it smooth. You don't want it. You don't need to mold it. The back is you know this back little section where your handle goes in there is where you want to mold a little bit. But all the uh, you know all the business end is on the top side, and that's where you have to mold it, and that's where you add your retention. So with this one, uh, I switched it up a little bit. Same idea with the same uh, two Chicago screws here, one Chicago screw here. But what I went ahead and did is I added, because um, I have leather here too, because uh, from when I'm making straps, I've had a bunch of leather here. Uh, retention's really good. You can see this thing's a beast, man. So here you go. That's in the background. I redid the handle on this, guys. If you don't, if you remember the old one, it was kind of cheesy, uh, just really plain and green. I went ahead and did this uh, kind of a thorn pattern. I think Menavade kind of called it the thorn pattern and I just stuck with it so and it's kind of a really it's got a um, earth brown and OD green you can barely tell very subdued uh, with a matching bead but this thing is complete I'm not doing anything more with it uh, I think it's probably as good as it's gonna get it's pretty awesome so the sheet for it back to that uh, these what I went ahead and did is I used leather straps on this guy so I got the leather straps in there and the leather snap over here turned out really nice I kind of wanted something a little bit more durable than the nylon uh, because this knife weighs almost two pounds so basically there we go there got that done same principle as before uh, with your three Chicago screws and your button snap there pop this guy back in there boom pretty good retention velcro and then there you go but as you can see Right here is the top of my belt, so the handle, the top of the handle is going to be right at my waistline, which at 20 inches is going to help me out as far as being able to um, uh, to draw to draw the uh, draw the knife without having too much problems. So, uh, there, I am going to notch this out 
for uh, leg straps because you're going to need it. Uh, and um, I'm going to add a couple holes here. I'm going to show you another sheath in a second that I did. That's kind of more towards the completed idea. But that's where I did there. Sorry about the minute. It's 25 minutes long, I know. But I just want to give you guys a bunch of really cool, uh, informative uh, stuff. So, let's see here. Okay. Here's another sheath. Pretty square and goofy. But it actually goes to a pretty cool knife. And uh, let's see here. Kuma Battle Cleaver. Comes with the Cordura uh, sheath, which wasn't too bad. Uh, I'm just on a Kydex trip. So basically, this goes in there. Good retention. Now, same idea as before. Got ourselves the Velcro around there. Nylon straps there. Works out pretty good. This is a little shorter. So of course I shortened it out. My waistline is still right here. And uh, it should be, it drops down good enough where it's going to be perfect. And uh, I'll be able to pull it out no problem. Uh, I got to make a little lanyard deal for here. But anyway, uh, so here we go. You can see that's been notched out. Half inch leg straps are going to go through there with the buckles. You got a hole cut out right here and a hole cut out right here. And basically that's where a strap is going to hook onto so you can uh, do the, so you can go ahead and do the uh, scalp carry. And uh, so basically if we've got a strap like so, this guy clamps in like so, you want to make these holes kind of generous so that no matter what you have, and there you go. So now you're all ready for scout carry with the strap. That's what these holes are for there. So this is probably, um, and like I said, the more generous you make the holes, the easier it is to, uh, to take the strap off or whatever. And uh, I don't know how much more I could possibly make this uh, more tricked out. Uh, I could add fire steel to it, but that's not really anything new. I just uh, wanted to go ahead and made it fully functional. So there's my sheath for that. Got a pretty good press on this. I did this one with the larger, um, with the larger press too, because it is larger. So anyway, guys, there you go. I hope I did not forget any information. Um, another good place to find stuff is Army Surplus Stores. Uh, you're able, like right here, there's a belt loop right there with the little strap. So let's say instead of adding those nylon webbings, I can just do the notch for this strap to go in, and I got my belt loop. But the problem is with this guy is it's got to be slid on your belt you have to take your belt off to slide this in there and I didn't want to do something like that I want to be able to take it off and put it on quickly but you can get nylon straps like this see the surplus $4.99 actually the place was going out of business so I got this for like uh, I think half off $2.50 it was five of them the other two in a box um, other thing too I mean OD green straps with a little buckle deal here um, all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, there's, you can go crazy with different kinds of shackles and, and stuff like that. These are pretty cool. Little shackle type of deal. Uh, although it's nickel plated, so it's kind of bright and shiny. So not something I'd really want to um, go ahead and use on that. But I picked them up. And half inch nylon webbing. All day. You can go ahead and use that. So... I hope I did not forget anything. I'm sorry about this long-winded video. It's like 30 minutes long. And uh, hopefully, just skip through to what the information you need. Hopefully, you'll get uh, whatever. Um, it'll help you out as far as making your own sheets. At least some valuable information. Uh, save you guys some time. So, won't take any more of your time. You guys take it easy. Peace.